We're here in Cambridge at the Raspberry Pi Foundation with Carrie Ann Philbin to discuss the Raspberry Pi. Carrie Ann is the Director of Education here, she's a member of CAS's board, she chairs CAS Include, and she also runs this hugely successful YouTube channel, Geek Girl Diaries. Carrie Ann, it's really great to be here this afternoon. Thank you very much for having us. I'll fill in some of the details about the history of the Raspberry Pi. What was it originally designed for? So lots of people have really um, interesting perspective on, on where did this device come from that's so popular now and so you know well bought by makers. But actually, um, it was all to do with education, mm. and that's the important part for me working here at Raspberry Pi. So the co-founders are really interesting because they're all working, um, mainly working at Cambridge University. And so they saw that the uptake of computer science at undergraduate level, one of the best universities in the world, was really, really poor. And as the years were going on, it was kind of dropping off and the numbers applying were getting smaller and smaller. Why was that? Um, so, I mean, there's, a, there's lots of thoughts behind yeah. this, that there's a kind of a de-skilled um, kind of from mm. coming from secondary school and before that um, and, and the kind of the dot-com boom might have had some kind of effect okay. on the numbers um, and so they just kind of thought about well, what what did they enjoy doing when they were younger what kind of led them to yes. take up computer science um, at degree level and quite a few of them thought back to the BBC Micro so the BBC Micro plays a really important part in the Raspberry Pi story um, and they thought about this device that they could kind of hack and they had to write, type some kind of code into to make something happen. Um, and that was really the birthplace of the Raspberry Pi. That's fabulous, it really is. I remember the BBC Micro yeah. myself. So why would you use a Raspberry Pi in computing education? What are the advantages of the Raspberry Pi over your traditional desktop or laptop computer? I mean, it's a really good question because it was never really designed to go into the classroom. Although it was created mm. for education, the idea was that young people would have it at home, mm. you can plug it into your TV, use an old keyboard and mouse and off you go, you've got something to hack on. Um, but really it's the fault of teachers like me and other early adopters who took it into the classroom because what I found in my school was that all of our computers were networked. Um, and I couldn't execute any code on them. Of course, yes. <laughs> and this seemed like a really yeah. good solution. I could just bring this in, plug it into the existing monitors, um, and actually the children had something that they could break, and it didn't really matter if they broke the software. I could just wipe the SD card to use them card again. In. Yes. Yeah. Can you give me some examples then of how the Raspberry Pi is being used in classroom lessons? So a lot of people are really excited by Minecraft. So our right. version of Minecraft, you can program in Python. Um, and so that's quite an interesting way to get kids learning about com computer science concepts, like sequencing and loops mm. and conditionals and so on. Um, but al also because it has the physical computing element of it, it's got the GPIO pins, you can control real world objects. So you can teach um, sequencing and repetition just by connecting you know, small components like LEDs and so on to it. And that's quite good fun. And that's something that can happen in a normal lesson context with, say, 30 children all working together yes. on these sorts of projects. Yeah, so James Robinson, who works here at the Foundation, yeah. tells this brilliant story. When he was a teacher in a local secondary school, he was being observed at the time uh, by senior leadership, and he had um, LEDs for all of his students, and they were plugging them in, they were programming them in Python, um, and he had forgotten resistors, and so most of them <laughs> kind of broke. <laughs> Okay. Of course, they're LEDs, so you know it's not that dangerous. They just make a little ping noise um, <laughs> and stop working. But that's as bad as it got. But they all learned um, some really interesting things during that lesson about needing resistors, yeah. <laughs> what happens to components, um, and they were able to program them. And of course, that takes a young person's understanding of computing to a whole deeper level than you'll get through moving cats around the screen in Scratch or even writing Python code just to run on the screen, I suppose. Right, there's something about that physical mm. thing that once you create something and make something happen, there's some in, you know, joy that you just can't help but feel and you feel really empowered that you've done mm. that. And we've done this with adults and children. And I'm yet to see anyone kind of go, oh, okay, I lit up an LED. <laughs> Everyone's response is always like, yes, yeah. I did this thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really interesting in an education context. 
But I imagine there's a huge amount of use of these in other contexts, the extracurricular club, um, and children just using these independently, or children using these in activities beyond school. What are some of the success stories there? What works really well? Um, we're trying to work on building our own kind of curriculum mm -hmm. here at Raspberry Pi, a kind of digital making curriculum is what we refer to it as. So you don't just learn about computer science or computational thinking or programming, you're also learning um, about things like soldering and protein typing and design and manufacture and those types of skills too because they cross over quite a lot for us right. here at Raspberry Pi. Yes. Right? But what about the approach to using these in the classroom? Is a project-based approach better than one which focuses on subject knowledge? Yep, and it just makes, the, it really tends to lean towards project-based learning in a really yes. nice way right. um, which we're seeing teachers uh, pick up and use in the classroom. That's so good to hear that that's happening, yeah. it really is. But thinking about the after-school club, there must be so much use being made of these in extracurricular activities, either within schools or beyond schools, or young people doing things just independently with these, as I suppose was originally intended. What are the stories there? What, what does work really so, well? There's quite a few, because yes, we see them used most often in after-school clubs. Yeah. Um, and my favourite is to do with high-altitude ballooning. Okay. So, the right. fact that children can build a space program of their own and put a computer into space, launch it themselves, get it up, they're taking pictures, they can track it, go and collect it, and they have all these beautiful photographs afterwards is just amazing. And all of this for under £100 is quite special. It's a lovely thing to do, but tell me a little more about what a young person learns through doing this. Oh, gosh, they learn so much. So a lot of it is a, a, um, kind of to do with weather. Okay. Like how do you yes. get a weather balloon? Um, how do you calculate the weight of the payload that it needs to take mm -hmm. up there? You need to calculate um, which direction it's going to go in. You've got to work out how much helium you're going to put into the balloon to calculate how far it will go because the last thing you want to do is to go in the sea because obviously <laughs> we're an island. <laughs> there's lots here that they have to um, understand about aviation rules because um, there's certain rules around sending up balloons. Um, you have to program it to take time-lapse pictures over a yeah. certain amount of time. Um, there's lots and lots in, involved in that and there's a real collaborative project of finding yes, schools have um, six formers who go on the chase because mm. they can drive <laughs> to go and collect the payload but the children kind of let the balloon go in the first place um, and there's lots of stories around that which is quite good fun. The authentic meaningful context provides a real motivation to learn some of these much more complex ideas perhaps. Right and yeah. it, it gets people thinking about not just computer science as, as a subject you take to become a computer programmer but actually computer science being part of so many other disciplines mm. and that's really interesting. Mm. Mm. So what about the Astro Pi then getting a couple of these up onto the International Space Station with Tim Peake what a tremendous achievement. That is, it's a huge achievement yes. and, um, you know, I wish I could take credit for it, <laughs> but I can't. Um, and we're just so lucky that UK Space saw this opportunity mm -hmm. and the other partners that got involved that we could actually do this. And a testament to my colleagues here at Raspberry Pi that they were able to put a Raspberry Pi through all the tests that it had to go through mm -hmm. to go up to the International Space Station. And we held our breath <laughs> when it went up, um, when we were really scared that the rocket might blow up on the way up that containing the two pies, um, but it made it there safely. And right now there are two of them on board the International Space Station. One is pointing out uh, of a hatch window and one is inside and both of them are running code written by children. That's absolutely amazing. Exciting. And this was an open competition of children suggesting their projects, writing their code to run up on Raspberry Pi in yes. space. And there's some really it's good fabulous. examples. So one of the um, projects um, was called Sweaty Astronaut, but we had to change the name of it. And the idea is that the humidity sensor will, will kind of, you'll, change, you'll see the fluctuation in the humidity mm. on the data logging. And so you'd know if there was an astronaut nearby. And that's, that's kind of good for And them. it works. Yes. It really does detect astronaut, yeah. the presence of an astronaut. Yeah. What, are, what's the, what are the other projects that they have running on these? So flags is a really good okay. one. I really like flags. Um, so the camera is pointing out of a window. And as the ISS passes over the Earth, um, it knows what country it's flying over. And it displays a picture of that country's flag on the Astro Pi so the astronauts can see it. So how, how, sorry, how does it know which country it's flying <laughs> over? Is this clever image recognition on country shapes? Not <laughs> quite, okay. no. Um, so it's, it's kind of a complicated uh, program where it's using the magnetometer and it's trying to work yeah. out where it is. Um, my colleague Dave knows much more about it. It sounded really complicated. That sounds amazing. Um, but this was a school um, in York, I think just outside in Thursk. 
Um, and this was a club, a school club that together came up with this project idea and worked on bits of it individually and then together submitted it, which I think is beautiful. It sounds fabulous. Can you give me some other examples of how it's being used in the classroom? What sort of projects seem to work very well? I was really surprised about how they are using technology to solve real world problems. Mm, mm. So things like recycling, which I'd never even thought about, where um, they've created like a special recognition program where it would weigh certain pieces of rubbish and it would work out where it needs to be recycled or not and they just created this kind of dustbin robot that would kind of automatically sort things and they're really thinking about projects that, are, that will help their community or just help the world generally which is not something that I always immediately jump to when I think of projects. And you're doing lots of training for teachers as well, what's the approach to CPD that you've adopted with Pi Academy? Yeah, Pi Academy is a lot of fun and they all... It, started out as this idea of how could we show teachers that physical computing um, is an exciting way to teach mm, computer mm, science. Mm. Um, what it definitely is not um, is this is a Raspberry Pi and this is how you use a Raspberry Pi and this is, you know, we're going to sell you lots of product now, that's not <laughs> right. what it is. Other um, CPD programs are available. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and really it's about project-based learning and, and trying to get teachers confident that it's okay to not be the expert in the classroom wow. and that it's okay right. to start with a big idea. Um, it's about collaboration, it's about decomposition um, and it's it's a lot of fun. So day one we have some back-to-back -back workshops that we run to kind of show them um, some different ideas that we've come up with and then day two is just a hackathon mm. and that for teachers is a new concept. Um, to have time off of school where you are able to just have an, to have the freedom to have an idea, to have um, experts around you that can help you with that idea and take a project from kind of concept fa phase all the way through to completion and then present it at the end. We're, we're seeing it's quite liberating for teachers to have that time. So this is much more about approaches and confidence and pedagogy than subject knowledge as Exactly, such. yeah. I mean, oh. I think you can teach someone syntax, okay. but you can't <laughs> always teach someone how to apply that syntax mm. in a short period of time. Yeah. And so the approach we take is to try and kind of ignore syntax. Um, we don't sit there and say, well, okay, this is algorithms <laughs> and this is decomposition and this is this. We get them to experience it and at the end yeah. of the day we ask them questions as they're presenting and then there's a kind of sudden realisation that they were the learner Oh, that's what decomposition yes. is yeah. now, because I did it today. Oh, that's what an algorithm is, because we did that. Can you give me some other examples of how it's being used in the classroom? What sort of projects seem to work very well? It's approach. so beneficial to make something, and the, uh, the excitement is always there. The children are always asking questions, they're really excited about it. We're seeing it with the teachers as well. So why wouldn't this work in the classroom? Yeah. And with teachers having to be experts on so many things, especially in primary, here's an opportunity where Computer science can be cross-curricular, mm -hmm. and that's exciting. That's so good, it really is. And what's next for Raspberry Pi? What, what's, what are the plans for the future? World domination. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid. Standard answer. Um, I'd do better. <laughs> I mean, product-wise, we're always going to try and create a device that's as low cost as possible to put it in the hands of children so that they're able to, to, to access computer science. That's and we have an embodiment good. of Moore's Law here, right. four years on. It's, it's several times, ten times as powerful as the, 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 the original product right. and exactly the same price point. Yes, and we now have a version that's only you know, four pounds. You know, on the front of the magazine. <laughs> right, that's crazy. Um, but that means we can give access to children who perhaps otherwise don't have their own computer. Mm. And that's really important too. There's a side here to Raspberry Pi where the software has free and open source software on it, including things like LibreOffice. Yes. So we yeah. can give them to children, they can do their homework, right? That's a really yeah. important point that we don't yeah. talk about so much. But it's also a device they can hack on. Yeah. And I think for us in the foundation, you know, we're going to continue with Pi Academy and see how far we can scale that. Um, we want to run more programs like Astro Pi. So we have the Weather Station project, which is about to kick off. We're giving away a thousand Weather Station kits globally. Lots of open data will be generated mm -hmm. through that. That's very exciting. Um, and we just want to, you know, push this as far as we can push it. But Carrie Ann, thank you so much for having us here this afternoon. It's been really interesting hearing about all of these great ideas for the Raspberry Pi. Thank you.